One thing I like to do after a flight is have a quick glance at some of the numbers, just out of curiosity. What was the maximum height I got to? What was the furthest distance I got to? What was the maximum current the motor drew? That kind of thing. And to save going into Data Analyzer to look for it, if you do display telemetry, but choose uh, the option for a double box instead of a single box, you'll get this. So instead of just showing you the, the value right now, it will also show you the lowest and highest values achieved during this session. So I can come here very quickly and see, oh, I got to that height, I reached that speed, I was that far away, um, that distance, there's my temperatures, they were within uh, setting. And somewhere back at the start, probably I've got the current. No, not too bothered, because it's in here. Um, that's one of the Lua apps I'm running, the um, dial display. And it will show me there the, the maximum currents and RPMs I reached at the same time. So those are useful ways of, at a glance, after a flight, what was the maximum I achieved or what was the maximum current draw. In all of my jet models and my one and only electric ducted fan, which is this one here on the screen, I have no need for the rudder trim because there are no spiral effects of airflow off the propeller. And if the whole thing's been built straight, rudder in the centre, that's the end of the job. And therefore, the trim buttons can be reassigned to something more useful, which to me is the nose wheel steering. Um, I find nose wheels, especially with cable steering, can tend to wander. Uh, every flight's a little bit different, whether it's pulling left or pulling right. And during the taxi out, it's lovely to be able to use the rudder trim buttons just to adjust the steering to get it straight. How do you do that? Go to Fine Tuning, Digital Trim, find your rudder trim button, which for me is on the left stick, as we can see here. If you had rudder on the right, it'd be that one. And simply change the function from rudder to your steering function. Many years ago, I thought it might be useful to make a little warning that I'd got two controls going which shouldn't be run together, i.e. the throttle was away from idle and the wheel brakes on my jet were on. Although I've now adapted it to be the throttle is on and I've popped open the air brakes or nudged the uh, crow brake, the butterfly brake, on my glider. These things can happen. And so all it is is a logic switch with the throttles a little bit open and the wheel brake or the crow brake lever is uh, in the slightly open position. So we'll show you what happens here with a jet model. I'll open the throttle with the wheel brakes off, open the throttle, close it, nothing happens. Throttle closed, I'll apply the wheel brakes all the way, nothing happens. But if the throttle's open a couple of clicks and I nudge the wheel brake lever, wheel brakes are on. Or I close the throttle, I've put the wheel brakes on, and I've forgotten I've left the wheel brakes on because they're on a side slider. And I try to taxi by opening the throttle. Wheel brakes are on. There we go. And simply uh, advanced properties, logical switch, simple uh, for me, the two controls, the P4, the throttle and the P6 slider, and then use that as a sound on event for the wheel brakes are on. Custom voice file made on the um, rc-thoughts website. And I say I use that along with throttle and crow brake um, on my gliders, just to make sure uh, I haven't got the brake open when I'm trying to do a climb. Would you like a warning that you've been a silly boy and you're going to fly your electric model and you've plugged in a battery that was actually already discharged, partly discharged, certainly not fully charged? You can do that. Go to timer sensors, alarms, set up your battery, the condition, what voltage do you want for it to recognize that this is not a fully charged battery? So some modest amount below the fully charged voltage. Put in a file. I made a custom file again at the RC-Thoughts. Turn the volume up again. Warning. Motor battery not charged. But the important thing is, come down here and say, use only during pre-flight check. 
So when you connect up the battery, the system looks at it then and only then and says, oh, you've connected a battery that was above the voltage set there. Ignore it. It's lovely. Oh, you've connected up a battery that was below that voltage. A lovely big message comes up on screen and it will not let you proceed until you clear it. So even if you miss it spe speaking out the warning. Warning. Motor battery not charged. It won't matter because your whole screen's gone white and there's a big warning message there and you can't get any further until you've cleared it. At which point you think, yes, I shall go and change the battery. Try making custom voice files for all the different battery uses that you have in your models. For example, I made voice files for uh, motor battery low voltage, receiver battery low voltage, transmitter battery low voltage, turbine battery low voltage, battery one low voltage, battery two low voltage. And then you can assign them in the correct place so that instead of just getting a warning low voltage and you think, what? What what was low voltage? Uh, it's actually going to tell you. For instance, you're flying your turbine model. You're using a central box, which has got BAT1 and BAT2. Um, and if you just get, whoa, low voltage warning. Well, was it the transmitter, the turbine battery, battery one or battery two? And if you make all the individual voice files and then set them up in the alarms, it will tell you exactly what was going on. For example... This is the one I use for when I plug the battery in. Warning. Motor battery not charged. Whereas this one tells me when I'm flying, should it get a bit low? Low voltage motor battery. So I know what's going on, which is quite different to... Warning. Low receiver voltage. Yeah. So don't just get told low voltage, get told which battery it really is. If you've got the data in telemetry and you've got the information from the manufacturer, use it to set alarms so that you don't overstress a component. For example, in this model, we've got alarms as well as the usual voltage ones. I've got uh, a Jetty Mizon Pro speed controller in here and it has two temperature sensors in it one for the speed controller itself and a separate one for the beck and since the radio is relying on the beck to provide it power um, it's very important for reliability and i don't want it to go to a high temperature which would help it break down and fail and since they're providing you with the temperature and jetty also tells you uh, the operating range of this, which is up to plus 85 degrees Celsius, I've set alarms at 60 degrees. Thankfully, I've never got anywhere near them, especially with a glider. Um, the speed controller is only running for a few seconds and I'm not overworking the Beck because I'm well within the specification of them. But if you were to get a particularly hot day and it's inside a, a model with poor cooling and a dark colour that's absorbing the sunlight, um, you could get up to fairly high temperatures in there. And then, of course, with current being pulled through a device, heats it up even further. It's surprising how the internal temperature of the receiver, yes, your Rex receivers will tell you that, can be a lot higher than the ambient temperature once they're switched on and going. So I've got alarms just to tell me, uh, and again, they've got custom voice files, so I know exactly which one's gone over temperature. And another one I run, because I'm running a, a speed controller that has a rev output on it, is the alarm for propeller RPM. In this case, the manufacturer, RFM, states that that size of propeller is limited to 6,500 revs. I think I've only got it up to about 5,002 or 5,003 at the most. But I don't want to overstress it and possibly shed a blade. So there is an alarm there just in case for some reason we managed to over rev it. Try making use of the ability to vary the volume using the knobs and sliders. For example, I have my vario volume on P5 on the right hand side. 
you can see a little symbol comes up as I move it up at the top of the screen there. I also have the master volume for it overrides everything on the P7 knob. You can see I can do that. Now the advantage to this for me is that um, I tend to use an earphone when I'm gliding, but not when I'm just doing normal power flying. You can set the volume there based on uh, things that I'm not separately controlling the volume for. For instance, the, Zero. the voice readouts. So I can turn the knob up until I get Signal. Zero. Percent. the level of volume I want. And then I can vary the vario volume separately just to get the vario beeping at the level I want. And then, should I need to turn everything up or down, all I have to do is turn the master volume knob up and down. And everything will go up and down with it. Or I can leave it where it is and I can silence the vario for a moment by shutting it off. Well, that's it, folks. I hope those were some interesting little ideas for you.